I'm very proud and pleased to introduce our lunchtime keynote speaker today, Remy Starter. He's the Chief Technology Officer and Senior Vice President at Yahoo. And for the last seven years, Remy has played a vital role in developing Yahoo's search, advertising, cloud computing. In his role as CTO, he's responsible for managing the company's technical strategy and long-term direction, and also plays an instrumental role in the development of Yahoo's open source strategy. Prior to joining Yahoo, Remy was uh, the founder of Starter Laboratories, maker of the Bloomberg search-based email client, which he sold to Yahoo in, in uh, 2004. He's also worked for Digital Equipment Systems Research Center, he, where, which is where he contributed to the AltaVista search engine. He was an assistant professor of computer science at UC Santa Cruz. He got his PhD in computer science from MIT in 1996. And uh, here's a little known fact about him. Ramey's admission essay that got him into MIT was about a particular hero of his, Walt Disney. So today, here in the house that Disney built, Ramey will be talking about the foundation of digital media, the connections shaping the next media frontier. And after that, we'll be sitting down for a short chat. Uh, and then we'll be taking questions from the audience. There will be people with microphones running around. so. You don't need to shout after having your meals. So without further ado, let me introduce Remy. Thank you. Yes, I can't say actually that that essay got me into MIT, but it's true. I did uh, write an essay about Walt Disney. Um, actually, I was very interested in him as a person. He was not only an amazing entrepreneur, but was really one of the first people to bring technology and media together. Um, even in the early days in the, in, of the animation, they won all kinds of Academy Awards for their technical innovation in animation. And of course, the parks are an amazing technical feat in themselves. So actually, I'm very excited to be here um, at Walt Disney World to talk about digital media. Now, um, when I got out of college, I went to Digital Equipment Corporation to a research lab. And at that research lab, there was a project called the Virtual Book. And there's a picture of the virtual book up there on my slide. Uh, and that was my first experience with tablets. Um, now, the folks at Digital weren't the first to think of tablets. They weren't the last to think of tablets. Um, tablets have really kind of sparked the imagination of technologists for a while. Um, one interesting story about the virtual book, um, the microprocessor that it used was something called the strong arm. The strong arm was um, the first low power implementation of the ARM architecture, and it was actually done at digital. And the designer of that was a man named Dan Darberpool. Uh, Dan left digital. He formed a company called uh, PA Semiconductor, which was eventually acquired by Apple, because now they have a very big interest in low power uh, ARM chips. So anyways, um, this has been a, a long time in coming. I think that uh, tablets are here, and they are really unlocking the true potential of digital media. And that's what I want to talk about today. Some numbers on slides, and then give you a little bit of a demo. Now, I do think one of the key things here, if you see tablet PC, I think the idea of tablets as a form of PC, of PCs without a keyboard, is actually what many of these um, older folks kind of went, went wrong on. I, I, one of the interesting things about the virtual book folks, so they said, look, explicitly, this is not a PC. This is an information appliance. And I think that mentality of tablets as an information appliance turned out to be the right one. So anyways, at some point, tablets have really started taking off. And we're not here yet. We're more like down here. But the trajectory is pretty clear. And in fact, when you look at the combined volume of smartphones and tablets, they have surpassed that of PCs. So uh, tablets are taking off. I do think that Apple did really take up this vision of tablets as an information appliance versus PCs, and that was a big part of their success. I also think that the timing was right as well. I think that the strong arm was not fast enough, and it took many generations of, of ARM processors to get to the point where you get the performance you needed. Battery life needed to improve. Resolution needed to improve. So there were some laws of physics, if you will, that, that kind of helped, you know, um, delay you know, till now, but we've, we've passed all these points in the technology curves, and, and so tablets you know, are really taking off, 
And with this volume explosion, again, I think we're going to see an explosion in the consumption of digital media. Now, um, the next chart here is a chart that's been making the rounds for a while. And what it shows in the light blue color is the minutes per month that users spend in various types of media. And actually, the purple color is the, um, the share of ad dollars in those channels. And the folks, the web folks like myself, have been out saying, hey, look it, the web has arrived. Look at how, many, uh, um, uh, how much engagement we have versus some of these traditional things. And also, look at the upside potential we have uh, in terms of growth. And, and so, indeed, the, the web has taken off. Um, and yet, sometimes, if you look at this with a slightly different lens, I think what it shows is that offline still dominates, and online is still the challenger. Um, and there's a lot of upside potential, not just here, but here. And again, I think that tablets are going to play a big role in, 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 in really seeing this number go through the roof. Um, here's some numbers that support that. We've been working with um, a large number of publishers, and one of them shared these numbers. These are numbers for a glossy monthly magazine. And that magazine gets about an hour per month of engagement from their subscriber base. Um, but they just haven't been able to translate that into their PC web experience. Um, they only get about five minutes. And in fact, this magazine is not unique. A lot of offline publishers have had a hard time translating their offline audience to an online audience. But these guys put out a tablet application, and the results were amazing to them. They'd almost, you know, they're, they're getting almost double the engagement in their tablet application than they're getting in the offline app. Um, um, thing. Now, of course, there could be some early adopter bias here. There undoubtedly is. But nonetheless, um, I think this tells a, a very telling story. And if you, if, you, if you kind of think about what this might imply, again, in terms of this number over here, I think the results um, you know, could be pretty stunning. Now, you might ask, what's going on? Why is this so low and that's so high? And you know, if you think about consuming media in front of a PC where you've got to kind of have to sit down, lean over, your, your hands going back and forth between the mouse and the keyboard. You know, as many people have pointed out, that's actually not a great experience. And in fact, in many ways, we could say, hey, wh why? You know, it's amazing the web has done as well as it has, given that user interface. You know, tablets, in contrast, are this amazingly human device. You can cradle it in your arm. You can use it in any position. You can use it standing up, sitting down, leaning back on a couch, lying down. You know, people talk a lot about it as a lean back experience, and that's true. But actually, it's kind of like in any experience. I don't, I don't know, lean back, lean forward, standing up. You can use this thing everywhere. And the, the, the gestures, the human j touch there is just so natural for people. And there's stories about two-year-olds who will use their parents' iPad for just a few minutes and then go to the television set and, and try to swipe because it's just such a natural way to interact with screens. So I think what we're seeing here is not just a matter of early adopter bias, but I think we have a device that is just fundamentally human friendly. And again, the implications for digital media are, um, are substantial. So what I wanted to do is to you know, tell the story with a demonstration. And in honor of the theme of this conference, I wanted to kind of organize it around the theme of connections. Because if you think about media, whether it's online or offline, media is all about making connections. Publishers connecting to audiences, advertisers connecting to their consumers, and increasingly with social media, consumers connecting with each other through content. But it's not just connections, it's high quality connections. That, at the end of the day, is what matters most. Publishers want their audiences coming back over and over again. And advertisers want their consumers to remember them and to remember them well. Um, and, and so high quality connections is at the core of the media business. Um, so I'll go through a demonstration and kind of hit the publisher connection, advertiser connection, a little bit on the consumer connection. And then as a technologist, I did want to just talk a little bit about how tablets um, are, you know, have a few challenges to them. And I just wanted to kind of highlight where, where those are. So if we can switch over to uh, the demo here. Um, let me fire that up. Um, what we have here is an upcoming product from Yahoo called LiveStand. LiveStand is a digital newsstand optimized for tablets, featuring ever-changing content continuously programmed by personal intent and personal interests. 
And on this home screen here, you have headlines from the publications that I'm subscribed to. And what we do here is we actually personally go, go, go through and pick out you know, rich images uh, with some personalization technology, and we put some motion to them, which really, I think, pulls you in. I, I love the photos actually here from the, uh, from the surfer things. They're very dramatic. Uh, but anyhow, as I indicated, the concept of publications are the, the central point of how LiveStand works. These are my publications on my bookshelf. The idea is that these are branded, programmed experiences. We, we don't think that simply aggregating a bunch of articles is the best way for a publisher to make that personally meaningful connection with their audience. We really want to give the publisher, just as the tablet is a wonderful canvas, we want to give publishers you know, the, the, the full capabilities of that canvas. And we think publications are the way to do that. So if we tap into one of these publications, um, we have standard templates that, that publishers can use, and they can put their content into that, or they can define their own template. Now, this is the standard template, and it features along the top against, again, personally selected headlines from uh, the magazine. And you can see the, the experience here is optimized for the touch display, high performance. We're putting a lot of effort into good performance because we think that's really important. So we have headlines on top, and then topics on the bottom. Topics are kind of like sections in a magazine. However, there are HTML5 modules that are uh, location aware, they're real time, um, and they can be programmed. Um, and so modules can come in and out uh, dynamically from the publisher. So if we tap into one of the topics here, the topic snaps in, it loads pretty quickly, and then we can, again, go into a very rich, graphically rich experience. Uh, again, there's another opportunity for personalizing content so we can pick articles that are relevant to the user. And then we have what we call algorithmic layout technology, which will lay out all of this content um, in a way that really kind of fully utilizes the graphical capabilities of the device. Now, topics can link to topics. So this buyer's guide actually is itself a whole topic. It's not just an article. Now, this topic takes advantage of the animation capabilities of HTML5. And you know, one of the, the promises of digital media is interactivity. And yet, if you think about the web in particular, I don't think that that promise has nearly been um, realized. And you know, this is obviously a bit of a toy. Um, but to me, it really sparks the imagination that you know, with this device and, and how human-centric it is and how people love to touch it, um, that we have a medium where finally we can explore the true interactive potential of digital media. <clears throat> um, so we'll just go back to this. Um, you know, there's lots I could show you on the publisher side, but I think you kind of get the point here. You know, in, in, in terms of taking advantage of the tablet, you know, it's not going to be as simple as taking some JPEGs from a print magazine and slapping them into an app. You know, what you see here is a much more sophisticated, uh, personalized, interactive user experience. But I think that publishers will. They are. You can see it in droves. We saw it this morning. Um, embrace the capabilities of this device. And you know, kind of going back to that chart of you know, PC versus tablet consumption, that this is really going to cause a big explosion. So that's from the publisher side of things. You know, what about advertising? So, <clears throat> We think that the tablet will create a canvas on which advertisers can finally have the emotional effectiveness of television together with the data richness, the actionability, and the measurability of the internet. And you know, I think that if you look again at that chart where the ad spend on the web was lagging time spent, you know, I do think that the, the canvas of PCs is, is just not the best. I think the canvas of tablets can offer a lot more. So I'm going to show you an ad execution here where the page is going to fold itself into a paper airplane. And then you can kind of pick up the thing, fly it around, use the accelerometer, dip it in. Now I got to get this thing back aligned. Sorry about that. And the ad can continue to be interactive with actionable content. Um, you know, the Super Bowl has kind of created this competition among advertisers and their agencies to create ever more creative, engaging, <coughs> excuse me, ads. 
And I, and I think that tablets, I hope that tablets create a similar type of friendly competition. Because, I mean, look, this, this is, a, again, it's a little bit of a toy. But if you, you know, the possibilities here are great. And if you can imagine, like, the roller baby equivalent um, of, of an interactive ad, um, the, the possibilities here are really pretty um, enormous. Um, but where I think as far as advertisers go, well, uh, you know, and just incredible ad creatives is, is one possibility. I think there's another possibility. And let me tell you a story here. Uh, Blake Irving, our chief product officer, recently visited with a consumer packaged good company and gave them the live stand demo. And he kind of rushed through the publisher part a little bit, and he showed some of these interactive um, ad creatives, thinking that that's where the folks were going to dig in and be excited. You know, but at some point, the, an executive leaned forward and said, hey, wait a minute. You know, we're, we're a publisher. We, we've been publishing cookbooks for over 100 years, and it's been a fantastic way for us to connect to our audience. Um, and the conversation turned completely on to the conversation around you know, that advertiser as a publisher in live stand. And of course, that makes a whole lot of sense. So I've navigated into the area where people add uh, publications to their library. And as you can see, in addition to Yahoo and uh, third party um, uh, publishers, we have a publication from an advertiser, um, an, a publication that speaks to running and fitness enthusiasts, which is, of course, a very important segment to this advertiser. So we can kind of load that thing up then go back to my library, and I have a new publication there. And, and we can go into that publication. Now, this is a brand that has you know, great brand presence, very loyal users. This is a great medium for that brand to reach out to those loyal users and to connect to them more deeply. Um, again, you see the headlines on top, topics on the bottom. Um, there's all kinds of content here. There's obviously articles about training. There's articles about accessories. Um, we've put some video content in here. And again, I love these uh, uh, gestures. This is a music video. We don't have the sound hooked up. Um, but it's a music video that's oriented towards the target segment here, right? Fitness enthusiasts. Um, and of course, it's got good branding for the advertisers. Um, and as we know, video is really taking off on tablets. And there's no reason why advertisers shouldn't be plugging into that. <clears throat> Now, um, let me go into another one of these topics. Uh, it's going to load up a second. Now, in this topic, what we have is a running statistics for the user. Um, and those running statistics are then kind of surrounded by uh, uh, relevant content, again, personalized um, in a nice layout. And again, this type of connection with, with your audience is really a, you know, a very deep connection at this point. And you can, you can understand, imagine, for example, you understand now how many miles this person is running. You know, at some point you say, okay, you've run, I don't know, I'm not a runner, but what's impressive? 200 miles? What, what's, the life, what's the life of a pair of sneakers? Anyways, hopefully Nike knows. Um, and after however many miles is, the, is the, the lifetime of a pair of sneakers, they can start saying, hey, you know, maybe it's time you know, to, to, to get your next pair. Um, so again, these publications offer a great opportunity for advertisers to connect to their publishers, now uh, to their consumers. I will say, you know, on the web, advertisers have had a little bit of a bad experience with these microsite things, which they kind of set up, they run a campaign against, and then it kind of goes into the ghost town of the web. Um, and I think that if, if, if advertisers really want to connect and create, you know, these lifelong connections with their consumers, they really, you know, will have to act like publishers and treat this more as a franchise than, than as an advertising campaign. So um, we've talked a little bit about publishers and a little bit about advertisers. Now let's talk a little bit about consumers and, and how consumers can, can connect to each other through media. Um, and, um, one way to do that is through the um, challenges, as you see up there. And actually, in the fitness world, these challenges are quite um, popular, where people say, hey, how many steps can you walk up, or how many calories did you eat? Um, and so you know, for a publisher like this, um, those types of social connections are a great way to leverage the social capabilities of, of this medium. Now, what I want to show you here is an execution of something that is, is commenting, which, of course, is running rampant on the web. And it's a great way to create conversations around content.
But again, in terms of this theme of how tablets can really supercharge you know, digital media, I think that the, the user interface here is really much different. And the rich canvas of tablet applications is what allows us to do this. So we have side by side the original content <coughs> on one side and then a much more functional kind of commenting app on the other. And so the, the conversation, as you'll see in a second actually, the conversation in the co on the content will never get separated. We can keep them together. Uh, wh what do I mean by that? Well, let me do a little bit more navigation. And while I'm doing it, let me kind of point out this thing called expose. Again, that's nice and fast. I could click into any of this content as I'm going through. Um, Again, one of the great things about tablets is they're really allowing us to explore new navigational models. You know, the web you know, has you know, the nav bar and the links and stuff. There's a whole new canvas here for us to explore. Now, what I want to navigate over to here is this inbox. Imagine on all that content that I just kind of swiped through, you had started a bunch of conversations. To, to engage and keep track of those conversations, you kind of need a hub to go to. And that might look something like this. Now here what we're doing is bringing multiple social streams together in one place. So you've got the email, you've got Q&A, and then of course the comments um, that, uh, for social media. But as you go into the comment here, you're brought back into that experience where the, where the content you know, as branded by the publisher reappears side by side with the commenting widget so that the, 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 the conversation and the content are never separated. And so conversations that are anchored around content can, can stay in context and I think become more rich. So anyways, um, you know, our goal today is to leave some time for um, the um, conversation. So I didn't want to go too much more on the, on, the, uh, uh, on the demo. We're going to switch back to a little bit here. Um, tablets you know, are big. But yeah, they're actually fitting into an even bigger story of four screens and a story of really continuous media consumption that follows you around four screens into all the different contexts that you go into um, as a user. And so not just that, that human kind of interactivity of the tablet, but that as part of um, a, an ecosystem of four screens, I think, is going to just completely um, um, reshape the landscape of digital media. So um, my job actually is this. I'm, I work in the, what I call the engine room of Yahoo. I'm, I'm down here and Carol calls out. Oh, speaking of Carol, I forgot to mention on the rich things, I will say. I want to call out to the daily guy. She loved the, uh, the Tiffany ads. Um, she does play with all of these apps and she loved the Tiffany ads. Um, but anyway, she's up there on the bridge. I'm down in the engine room, and I build the, the cloud infrastructure that, we're, that is going to power this four-screen experience. Um, that cloud infrastructure has at, a, at its center what you could think of as a supercomputer for processing enormous amounts of both content, which comes in, and also huge amounts of user information. And blending processing of content and user information together with very sophisticated algorithms is really at the core of, of what we do. Um, that kind of offline processing then feeds into sophisticated online algorithms, which, which decide you know, which headlines to present in that um, personalized experience that I showed you and which ads to show. Um, now, one term that I like to use in, this, in describing this overall system is backstage. And, if, and for people who are uh, Disney fans, going backstage here means kind of going behind the theme park you know, to keep it running and to make sure that the folks on stage, the consumers, have a great experience. And I think for digital media, it's important to have a strong backstage experience. And most people don't understand that as they consume just the, the, just the onstage. But backstage, there's, there's many, many people, editors, advertisers, publishers, developers, who are all working to create that um, onstage experience. They need, what I, they need to understand and influence. Those are the terms that we use. Understand is analytics. In the world of digital media, it's critical to understand what's happening on stage. And on the basis of that understanding, you can then influence it. And you need to have powerful tools in the backstage to help people influence things. So that's kind of the simplified architecture for the cloud. Now, how do tablets make this challenging? Well, first and foremost, 
Um, we believe strongly that tablets ought to have great disconnected operation. They shouldn't have to be connected to the cloud at all times to provide great experiences for users. And so for, for those of us who've been working on the web for a while, this introduces a challenge. We've never been disconnected from our supercomputer in the sky. Um, so figuring out how to take bits and pieces of those capabilities and kind of putting them you know, on this little tiny thing um, is, is one of the technical challenges that, that one has to work through to really take full advantage of the tablet. Another challenge is content reusability. And this, this challenge really speaks to the issue of the four screens. You know, publishers really do want to address their audience across all of those four screens. Um, and they want their content to be able to go onto all of those four screens. But at the same time, they want that content to be device optimized. They want to have the best experience on all four screens. And so getting a content management system and trans coding technologies and all that kind of stuff that allows one to reuse content across the four screens is another technical challenge um, in this era of the four screens. You know, at Yahoo, we're making a pretty big bet on HTML5. We think that with some native code um, on, on the devices, but HTML5 is the fundamental technology. We can get there. We can get that, um, that promise of um, you know, cross-screen but device-optimized experiences. There's this thing called science, which is kind of nebulous, but it, it's really what fuels that supercomputer that I was talking about. And there's enormous amounts of measurement, algorithm development, you know, super smart people that go and develop the science. And I think that this is, like in search, we've been doing this, you know, for a couple of decades in terms of just, you know, every quarter there's the new relevance algorithm, there's, there's the new metric, there's the new feature. The, the, it just always gets better and you, there's just this kind of crank that you turn. And that's, that's a huge amount of effort that one has to make to really realize the full potential of all of this. I've, I think, alluded to a couple of times interactivity as being, the, you know, one of the key possibilities of digital media that hasn't really been realized. I think that the tablets as a device and all of this cloud infrastructure create a platform for interactivity. But I think what's needed now actually is not so much technical work, but creative work. People sitting down and saying, hey, how can we create truly interactive media experiences? And, and I expect that, again, as tablets take off, um, those creative types will jump in and make that happen. So it's kind of a funny story, you know, going 1996, you know, I saw these guys upstairs working on, on this thing, and I, I never would have imagined that I'd be here at one of my favorite places in the world um, giving a demonstration on a tablet, um, talking about the future of digital media. Um, but, but here I am. And um, if I can just leave you with one thought, I think that probably most people in this audience, if not everybody, is as enthusiastic about tablets as I am. But I actually think that this is one of these places where no matter how enthusiastic you are, it's, it, it's probably even bigger than you think. And so leaning even harder into the possibilities of tablets and really um, helping drive the realization of their potential, I think is something we should all be jumping in and making happen. So that's it. Thank you, Ray. Excuse me. There's there's my demonstration of a tablet. Um, let's I think let's we have a quick a, conversation. Want to pull these forward? <laughs> yeah. Let's move the chairs. So we're running short on time, so I won't ask you to recall from memory your entire admissions essay on Walt Disney. <laughs> um, but I do want to, I did want to ask you just a little bit about your own tablet experiences, and then run through a few quick questions. Um, were, were you an early iPad adopter yourself? You saw it come out and you saw, immediately saw the benefit? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, again, I, I, I work in the engine room on the cloud. And uh, those of us who work on the cloud tend to be a bit camaraderie. And having seen tablets um, in many incarnations, I must say, when the iPad first came out, I'm like, yeah, I saw that in 1996. Um, it was my parents, actually, who sometimes struggled to get me birthday gifts. Um, they actually got me one as a birthday gift. Um, and the thing showed up um, actually a few days after my birthday because there was a backlog. And um, it, you know, within, you know, as soon as I started using it, I'm like, okay, these things have arrived. Um, it, it, you, know, you can tell once you have it that this, this is what the tablet wanted to be. Um, but I will admit um, that when I first heard about it, I'm thinking, okay, this is the next iteration. <laughs> yep, I, I had the same experience myself. So, 
I, I can understand that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the the other tablets out there. We've uh, we talked a lot about the iPad, but obviously, you know, uh, there, there are many iterations of Android tablets. Uh, where do you think they're at? Are, th are they are they at a, a, a good enough level yet that you know Yahoo is is looking to to get into that area as well? Oh yeah, we're we're looking at all the tablets, and and because you know we're so concerned about performance, um, you know we we have a certain view on these tablets, and it's kind of interesting actually that. Um, you can't say that any one of them is more performant than the other. Some of them do some things really fast, and others do other things really fast. And part of what we're doing is to kind of compensate, right? Work hard on one platform to, to, to deal with performance issues, work hard in a different platform to deal with performance issues, but then from a publisher perspective, you know, have that just kind of all, all, all work. So, I mean, I think that, again, in terms of the keys to the success of tablets, certainly that hitting those price performance curves was, it was really what helps explain that. And, and, and again, the product concept, you know, tablets as information appliances versus PCs, I think that those two things are really the key to success. And while Apple has a tremendous lead um, and a great ecosystem that it's building, um, I don't think they necessarily have a monopoly on those two uh, concepts. Got it. So you've said in the past, or Yahoo has said in the past, that uh, you don't see publications like The Daily as a competitor that in fact you would like to see it as part of Live Stand. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, I think the daily is, uh, you know, a, it, it's tremendous in many ways. I mean, I think putting that much editorial resource against a tablet first experience is, you know, a great example of leaning into tablets in a big way. Um, and I think that, again, they are also um, working pretty hard at trying to figure out, hey, what can be different about this medium as a, um, as a medium and really, um, you know, creatively try to take advantage of that. You know, I will say that, you know, there's a lot of technology behind this and, you know, Yahoo has a lot of technologists working not just, as I was, for example, indicating on, you know, creating a platform that can be performant across all these different um, tablets, but also that cloud infrastructure that allows the scientists, for example, to just crank and crank and crank away at personalization. So I think that, um, the platform that we're building is a tremendous platform for many of the people who are building tablet publications today. Excellent. Um, and I, I can't let you go there asking when we can expect to see this. Um, well, you know, <laughs> this is the, we will sell no wine before it's time. I, mean, I think get it, getting that performance right is, is really, really critical. And we're going we're gonna to hammer away at it until we get it. And so when people get it, they'll say, wow, this really is amazing. Well, I'm very excited to see it. I, I can't wait for it to uh, to arrive on the iPad. Um, you know, one, one more question on the, uh, and then I think we, we kind of have to wrap it up. I'm not sure we have much time for Q&A. Um, but <laughs> the, uh, so Steve Jobs at the iPad 2 launch famously said that we're in the, <laughs> the post-PC era mm -hmm. now. And it sounds like that, you know, from your presentation, you, you would kind of agree with that. Um, or, or is that going a little bit too far? You know, it's, uh, to what extent are tablets the future, and will we still have PCs? Will be, they be completely superseded? What's your thought? Well, no, I don't think they'll be completely superseded. Um, well, it, the way that I think about that actually comes from our experience in social, um, you know, Web 2.0 sites. And what we find is there's kind of like a pyramid. You know, and at the bottom of that pyramid is, you know, the largest part, the, you know, the wide part, are content consumers. And by far, you know, that's your largest audience. You know, on top of that, you have a smaller audience of content curators. That could be quite large still. On top of that, you know, actually, speaking of Mashable, you have what we call kind of the mashers, the people who do mashups. And then at the, at the apex of the pyramid are people who are really doing, you know, great new deep um, content generation. So, you know, kind of these Web 2.0 communities organize themselves over and over again into that, into that pyramid. I think for the people on the bottom two tiers at least, you know, tablets are great and it's all that you need. But I think for creating the types of um, um, ad experiences, for example, I showed here, you know, you will need to have a PC. Um, and, you know, I think PCs are getting into more of a replenish cycle at this point versus, you know, a fast growth cycle. Um, and tablets are going to go off. But I think PCs have their role to play on the creative side of things, and they're going to be with us, you know, forever. So PCs for creating, tablets for consuming. Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Thank okay. you very much, Ramey. Thank you. Let's give it up.